Hey everybody, how you doing? Welcome to another Teats Informational. Today we're talking about another new game from Queen Games, and this one's called Queen's Architect by Volkner Schachtel. I, Schachtel. Uh, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. And in this game for two to four players that plays about 60 minutes long, you are playing a royal architect that is um, trying to construct new villages, monasteries, towns, you're gathering a bunch of craftsmen to work for you and help you do this. They can also do day working. They can go and do farm work. There's a lot of things they can do to try to gain coin and to gain the appreciation of the queen, who ultimately, whoever's the best architect who's going to win the game, gets to build the queen's castle right here in this beautiful mountain on the game board. Uh, is the game fun? It's probably light to medium weight, maybe a little higher than medium for Queen's um, uh, normal fare. But let's take a look at the setup, let's take a look at the game, and we'll come back and give you my opinion on Queen's Architect. Okay everybody, here we are, we're going to talk about uh, Queen's Architect, and this is the setup of the game. First thing you're going to do is pick the side of the game board you're going to play with, in this case we're setting up for two players, so there's a two and three player side, and then there's a four player side on the other side. Then you're going to take all of your appreciation tokens. There's a few extra that are already in the box, but you're going to mix these up upside down, and then you're going to randomly place them along this appreciation track here. And so they're all going to have different numbers we'll talk about. Then everyone's going to select the color. So we got red and blue here. You're going to take action star in your color, and we'll talk more about that. You're going to take your uh, little color coordinated tavern. This is your tavern. And with your tavern, you're going to take uh, six, and they're color coordinated on the back. Your six quitting time tiles, which go over the different craftsmen's professions, and we'll talk about that. They're going to go right there at the front of your tavern. You're going to take two bonds each. Uh, you're going to take your eight building cubes. These are going to represent the buildings that you build uh, on the board. Uh, you're also going to take one guy who's your architect. He's going to go on the top spot right here of your action star. And then you're going to take your other guy. This guy is known as the money changer, and he's going to go on the left side of your tavern, which is a little confidence builder, and we'll talk about that. And then you're going to take your carriage, carriage, and it's going to go right in the middle of the board here where the king's castle, queen's castle is going to be constructed. Then what you're going to do is there's three different types of tiles. There's uh, the one that's got four craftsmen on it, one has two, one has three. There's a bunch of these. You're going to mix them up, and then you're going to randomly place them in the appropriate spots on your board. So you'll do that. I've already placed them all in all the different parts of the board. Then you're going to take your extra bonds, put them in thing, your, your money, put them in a couple baskets or on the side of the board. And then you're going to set up your craftsman tile. So the back, there's going to be 18 tiles that have this exclamation point. So you're going to take those, you're going to mix them all up, and then what you're going to do is you're going to place six of them uh, along the uh, billboard, which is where you're going to recruit everybody right here. And then just for, and then once you're done with that, you're going to take, for a two-player game, you're going to take four additional tiles. For a three-player game, six. And for a four-player game, eight. These are going to be kind of, you're going to kind of draft these tiles at the beginning of the game. And these are going to be your architect starting craftsmen. So you're basically going to put these along the side for space. We'll just put them right here for now. And we'll go over what you do with those. Then once you're done taking those, these are also ones that have exclamation points. Once you're done with those, you'll take the remaining exclamation point tiles and put them on top of all the other tiles that don't have exclamation points, which you're going to shuffle. And there's a place for them on the board. There's actually a few more tiles than what I have here, but to avoid having a huge stack, I just put them like that. And then that is basically the setup. Of course, once you figure out first player, whatever variable way you do it, uh, if you had the clean, the Kickstarter version, you got this little working hammer that represents the first player. And that is the basic setup for Queen's Architect. All right, one more quick thing for setup. Just so everybody knows, we have this little black piece right here. Just forgot to mention, that's going to go on top of the billboard track. This is the price scale. Okay, so one of the things you want to make sure you do is when you're going to be placing your craftsman tiles, when you put them on the billboard over here, you want to make sure that the little symbol here is at the 12 o'clock point, so it's facing up, because basically on the billboard, they're, as they gain experience, 
um, they're better workers, so you get to utilize them for a longer period of time. Um, let's take a closer look at the uh, Craftman tiles here. So uh, let's go straight to this one. So first, there's six different guilds, and they're different types of crafts. So this is the brick layer, of course. Uh, this is its symbol. The color is its guild. Uh, the numbers indicate the performance points, and that is um, basically when you're building... Um, this is how well your performance is. The more, the higher performance, the more appreciation points you get. This little symbol here is for appreciation when you're doing repairs. We'll talk about that. This is a symbol that helps you gain more money when you're working as a day worker. So that is the brick layer. Uh, this is the stone mason. Uh, these are, of course, we've got to have our tailors. Uh, then we have our blacksmiths, uh, our glazers, which are our glass blowers. And finally, we got our lumberjacks. So that's a closer look at the craftsman tiles. Um, this is your action star, which is more uh, goes right into the kind of the rondelle sort of uh, feel of the game. So you have your action steps you're going to be able to take. Your architect's going to start here at the starting point, and on your turn, your basically sequence of play is you're going to move this guy one, two, or three spaces. You can never stay on the same space. So you can't do the same space twice. So if I move one, I could do day labor. If I move two, I could do higher. If I move three, I can do uh, sell bonds or gain confidence. You know, I can't do these other actions because I'm not over there. But once I'm here, I can go one, two. So you're going to be going around here taking actions each of your turn. Uh, what's going to happen is your craftsmen are going to actually attach to this the action star. It doesn't matter where you put them, but it does matter how they start. So based on where you, um, your f first starting tiles, so this is your dropout arrow. When this reaches your dropout arrow, once you take an action that, that requires um, your craftsman to rotate clockwise, it would drop out, he would retire, leave, quit, die, whatever, how, whatever however you want to thematically put it. Uh, but at the start, the start point is always the one behind the arrow at the beginning of the game, and then the rest is based on where they're on the billboard. So you'll move clockwise, and you'll see your performance points change as you go around. And that's how you'll place your craftsman inside your action star. That's a closer look at the craftsman and the action star. Okay, so then at the beginning of the game, you're gonna recruit or hire a couple craftsmen to start the game. So basically what you wanna do is gonna go, you're gonna have a selection tiles. These are the ones we set aside at the beginning of the game. And you're gonna have, it's gonna go first player to the last player, last player to the first player. So one, two, two, one, or based on how many players you have. So kind of what you want to do is you want to start to strategically look at the board. So you look at the bulletin board, you go, okay, I see who's available. I see there's some stonemasons here. I probably want to get a stonemason. But you also want to look at the demand tiles on the board. So you have your towns, which are your larger ones. You kind of see what the demand, what kind of work, what kind of craftsmen I need to build there. Then you have your villages, which are the smaller ones, and your monasteries, which are the, the ones with three. And then you can kind of look and go, okay, well, I need... Um, you know, there's a lot of uh, stonemasons or there's a lot of lumberjacks. I definitely need to get those guys. So basically, your first player, you so you pick and you go, okay, I'm, I guess I'll take this uh, stonemason. You look at the performance points are pretty equal. You grab this guy. And then you're going to put him on his starting location, which is, again, one behind the dropout arrow. Now... One of the things you can do is you can start them a little with a little bit less experience and, and gain some dollars, so some starting money. So I could either start them on a starting position, uh, which is here, or I can maybe rotate them one, two more, and then I could take two coin. So I take the two coin, and I'm going to put him in this orientation right here on my board. Um, oops, that was two. Okay, then the next player goes and maybe uh, they take, uh, let's say they take a stonemason as well. They just put them in at their starting point. And then maybe they take the um, tailor and then they, uh, let's say they take two coins. So they would go right here. Let's see, one, two. So they would take their two coin. And then I would take the brick mason and I'm not going to take any coin. I'm just going to put them straight up on his starting point. So we talk about the different actions in the game, and we'll, I'm just gonna pull this off so I can bring this up to you to see your, the action star. So the first one is the day laborer. Basically what the day laborer does is you can move your architect onto that spot. So you move him onto the spot. And then what you're gonna get is you're gonna get, if you take this action, you're gonna get one coin for 
every craftsman you have on your action star. So in this case, we have two, so I would get one money. If I had uh, four or, th or if I had three, I would get two money because it's always rounded up. If I had four, I get two money. If I have five, I get three. If I have six, I get three. So I would get one money here. Now, earlier I mentioned that if you have this little symbol on here, the day laborer, you can also rotate this once and get an additional two money. So if I was the blue player and I was doing this, I could get one plus rotating him one counterclockwise and getting an extra two coins. And so that is how the day laborer action works. Okay, if I come back up to my rondelle here, my little action star, the next one I could do is this symbol right here, which is the hire symbol. So this is how I'm gonna hire a new craftsman into my employee. They're gonna help us build and make the queen happy. So let's, if I take that action, I can go to the billboard and I can see who I got here. So in this case, um, each level is a level of experience. So it's one coin all the way up to six coins. So let's say I look at this and I'm, you know, I'm plotting, okay, hey, I want to be able to go here. So I got a bricklayer and I got a stonemason, but I need a tailor. So I'm going to take one of these tailors. Now the difference is I can look at this and I can say, okay, um, I can pay two and get her, but she's going to have one less experience, which means one less turn of the craftsman tile until she goes away. So, but she does have some high numbers here. So these high numbers are performance points. And when you build, this is how you gain um, appreciation from the queen. The higher the performance uh, that's pointing on your action star to your hammer, the, the more appreciation you gain. So she has some pretty high appreciation. Um, so I like her a little bit better. So I'm gonna take her. And now if I look on the board here, that where the little hammer is, which is basically at three o'clock here, that is what is going to end up going into my action star. So it would go right here, so right here. So and subsequently, I would have one action I could take, then I could turn her, then I have one more action I could take with her later, and then she would go away. Unless I go to the tavern and rest her and, and, and continue to keep her happy. And we'll talk about that later as well. So that is, oh, and then in, once you've done that, you uh, look at this thing, and since no one took the top one, this little black cube goes over and then reduces the cost of what that top person, that top bricklayer is going to cost. So that's basically a little price scale that goes down as you go. Then this slides up, and we do a new tile. And that is the higher. Okay, the next action you can take on the rondelle is right here is going to be the gain confidence and uh, redeem bonds. So you can do one of the two. So the first one is gain confidence that you're going to be able to pay back these bonds or whatever and gain confidence in your abilities. Uh, so you are going to basically, if I take that action, if I gain confidence, what I do is I can move this guy on my tavern, my tavern from the times one spot to the times two spot. And I'll explain to you what that means. So the other portion of this is the redeem bonds. So if you're on the starting point, if your money changer is on the starting point, you get to exchange one bond. And that one bond would be worth two coin. Okay. But if I am here and then on a later turn, I want to exchange bonds, I can do two of them, which would be four coin. If I gain confidence up to the three times point, I can turn in three at a time or four at a time. So this is just another way of generating money. So you can do one of two things. You can either increase confidence, that's the whole turn, or you can redeem bonds. All right, the next action is the travel action, which is your little carriage right here. And the travel action is really simple. It's how you move around to town to town so you can build. So basically, I don't know if you can see this up here, but it's one time, so you get to move, uh, it's zero coins, so I can move anywhere I want. I can move here or I can move here. Um, I, so I can move basically to one town for zero coins. If I want to move two, I would go one, two, and it would cost me one coin. Three movements would cost me three, four would cost me six, five would cost me 10, and six would cost me 15. And that's basically how you move around to the towns. You have to be in the town to build, and we'll talk about that in a minute as well. And that is the travel um, action. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, the next action on here, which is an important one, which is your tavern. So just for this sake, let's pull up the tavern and take a closer look at it. 
Uh, these are your quitting time tiles, these little six guys there. So I'm going to set those here for a second. So basically your tavern, if you look at it, uh, this is your, where you're going to rest your guys. So being a good employer, you want to rest them, let them get some drinks, hang out, you know, have some downtime so they're more productive and they can be more productive. So here's your tavern. So this is the main entrance area. So you have your different tiles. So you can decide who goes in. Uh, so let's say I want to rest my tailor and I want to rest my stonemason. Basically take these two guys and they go in here inside your tavern. Now it's going to cost me this much. It's going to cost me three coin to send two guys, you know, uh, six coin to send three guys, uh, and so on, so forth and so on. So they're going to go in there, and when they go in there, I get to rotate them one counterclockwise on my action star. So they get to go uh, back, so I can either move them to a higher performance point, I can get them so they're able to do another action, so forth and so on. So later in the game, Let's say you want to take this action again. Well, now these guys are in the bar. So what they're going to do is they're going to move up to the dormitory. Okay. And they can't go back in. And then you can bring anybody else in. So let's say later in the game I want to take my brick mason. So now I bring him in and that cost me one coin. So let's say later in the game I go to the tavern again. Now these two guys, my stone mason and my tailor, they come out of the dormitory. My bricklayer goes into the dormitory. And then now I have the option to send any one of these four guys in. And so that's kind of the rotation of the tavern. A uh, real important piece of the game here to make sure that you're um, not losing your craftsmen or definitely uh, positioning these guys so they can, um, they can have more performance points when you're ultimately doing a build. The final position on the action star that you can bring your architect to is the construct area. So construct is if you want to be able to construct in a particular area. So let's say uh, my carriage is up here because as you can see I've got the three guys I need to do right here. I've got the tailor, the bricklayer, and stone mason. So I can build here. Um, and what's going to happen is I have to, three things have to qualify. I have, my carriage has to be at that location. I have, I can only construct one building so I couldn't, if I already had constructed here I could not construct again. So I haven't constructed there so I have that and I must have at least one craftsman for each space. Any additional craftsmen I had, so like later in the game, let's say I had, I also had a glass blower. He would certainly, uh, he would definitely participate in that build. So once I have that, I've decided I can, I can do that. I'm basically going to build a building here. Now on these spaces, there's a negative zero, a negative two, and a negative four. So if you're the first one there, you normally are always going to use the negative zero, and I'll explain to you what that means. So you're going to go to your action star and you're going to look at the performance points for each of your craftsmen. So here's 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I have 10 uh, basically performance points, which are going to turn into Queen's Appreciation points. And then normally, if I'm not on the negative 0, I'm negative 2, I'm going to minus that out. So if I was on negative 2, I would go from 10 to 8. But in this case, I'm not. I have a total of 10. My maximum is 15. So on the small ones, it's 10, medium ones is 15, and the large villages, it's 20. So if I was over 15, if I ended up calculating to be 19, I could only get 15 points. So in this case, I have 10. So what happens is, here's my little guy down here on the appreciation track. So what I can do is I can take him and I can move him up one space because I have, it takes seven appreciation points for me to move up there. Now, if this was a higher number, let's say, well, the highest number is nine, so I'd always be able to move. Uh, but if I couldn't move, let's say I only had six uh, points, I wouldn't be able to move, but I would, and subsequently, I would take six bonds. So I would take six of these bonds. But in this case, I can move, so I move here. That's seven. The next level is six. I don't have enough appreciation points to move to six. So the additional points, which is three, I would get three bonds. So I basically pass that level, move up here, and I would gain three bonds that I can turn in later for cash. Okay, so one other thing on construct is when, you, when you're building your building, so we built our building here, I didn't mention you do have to absolutely rotate all your craftsmen, counterclockwise, one spot. If for some reason uh, they're in the dropout area, they would drop out. None of my guys are in dropout here. 
Okay, let's talk about the appreciation track real quick, a couple quick points. So if I had the 10, I could obviously, I could either move up like we did take and take my three bonds and move up my seven, or I can just take 10 bonds. I don't have to move. I can take 10 bonds and just collect a bunch of bonds and have money uh, throughout the game. Or let's say a different scenario. Let's say I had 15 points. Now I could go one up for seven. And then I, instead of going up to the next one, I could take six bonds. Or what I could do is I could go up seven for seven. I could go up there for 13 and I have two remaining bonds. And then I would get two bonds plus two steps. Okay, the other thing you do at the construct site is you can be a good good do-getter do -getter, and you can uh, do repairs. And you can do them in a town, a monastery, a village. doesn't matter where your carriage is. doesn't matter what the demand tile asks for. You just have to be able to do repairs. And what you're going to do is you're going to assign your craftsmen to um, do those repairs. So one thing, they all three of your craftsmen have to be from a different guild or a different profession. Okay, and then what you're going to do is you're going to look at this little appreciation deal. So she has two. So if I wanted to commit her, she would have two. I commit my stone mason uh, for one, and I commit my bricklayer for two. That would be a total of five. So that's five appreciation points. These guys are all going to rotate. Uh-oh. Um, she's going to drop out because she's out of, um, in this case, she'd be gone. Uh, so she's out. And then basically what happens is I have five appreciation points. I don't have enough to move up here. If I had six, I could, so I might not want to do it right now. But then I would basically collect five bonds. And that's the do repairs action. Okay, a couple other things to go over. So on the little tiles here that show me the craftsman I need, there's also on the bigger villages, there's a little icon. So in this case, um, I get to take the higher action. So if I build in that village, I get to take a higher action. I still have to pay, but I get to take a higher action without having to move my architect. So it's kind of a free higher action. The other ones they have is they have this one. This will give you two additional appreciation points when you're adding up your total appreciation points. And then they have the little money one that gives you three coin or one or two, depending on whatever it says on, on the, the token there. So that is basically the bonus tiles. Okay, as the game's progressing along, eventually you're gonna keep moving up this uh, uh, appreciation track. And when somebody gets to the top, let's say I get to the top here, um, these are, there's some qualifications that I have to have in order to participate in winning the game, which is being able to construct the queen's palace. So let's say this carriage somewhere else. So one, the first thing I have to do is I have to be the top of the appreciation track, which I am. My carriage would have to be up here in the palace space, up here at the palace, ready to build. And I would have to have an architect Right here, it has to be on the construct top. So if he's here, I gotta wait till I get him up here. Remember, you can only move one, two, or three spaces. So he has to be in the construct top. And then my performance points for all my craftsmen have to equal 15. So six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. I'd have to have one other guy. Um, say I had this guy here, and that would be 15. I would have to have 15. And then I build, I build that, and they're not rotated or anything and I would win the game. Now, everyone gets an equal number of turns, so I went first, so Blue would have an opportunity to come up here and build, and let's say he had everything to build and he could participate in building it, then the tie would be broken amongst whoever had the highest sum of performance points. If both people have the same highest performance points, then you tie, you both you know, rejoice in helping the queen. So that's the basic rules um, of Queen's Architect. Okay, so that's the quick and uh, painless setup and quick uh, explanation of how to play the game, um, Queen's Architect. So, actually, you know, I read the rule book, I was kind of going through it, there's a lot of pieces, it kind of has a rondelle mechanism with those little action stars, and you have your craftsmen, which are from the different guilds, there's a lot of cool things, and you rotate them. Um, it can get a little clunky rotating them and making sure you're turning them the right way. Um, but yeah, it's still, it's still cool. I, I thought the, I really like the theme of it. I think the architect's cool. You're in demand. You're going around trying to do all these things. You get your carriage, you know, they're coming up on the billboard kind of thing. Uh, what happens in this game, I think, uh, which in some cases is fun, but you kind of need to know it going in. Cause if you go in as a big strategic gamer and you're, you know, plotting out your strategies for this, um, you're going to find that it's going to turn out to be more of a race and um, 
once people start getting going, there's always kind of a way they can go. And the most important thing is, you know, at the beginning of the game is kind of looking at the board and getting an idea of, okay, I, I definitely need a stonemason or I definitely need a tailor because they're all over the place. Um, and so you're kind of doing that. Um, the other important part is you got to make sure you keep your workers happy. So that's a little bit kind of like the real world. You got to send them to those tavern, let them get rest. You have to use that action. If you let your guys go and then you're kind of fighting to rehire guys and, and get where you need to go. Um, but I do think once someone gets ahead, they're kind of ahead. And if you're behind it's, and you can see their workers, it's going to be tough to, to catch up with them. Um, with that said, for some odd reason, I kind of like this game. I think it's good for newer gamers and you can kind of bring them in and teach them some different, maybe newer mechanics that's not too, too difficult to teach. So all in all, I like the game. There is a couple things that I think could, could change the game a little bit. There is that do repairs action where it says that you can be anywhere, doesn't matter what town you're in, doesn't matter what the little requirements are, doesn't matter anything. Um, so what people do is when they get near the end, they go straight to the middle and then they just sit there and do repairs, do repairs, do repairs. Um, and they have to go around, you know, they have to keep getting to that construct um, action. But I think it would be better if they had to be at least be in a town for that. So when once they get their, their appreciation up and they get their 15 points, they have to actually drive there. Maybe it's, you know, one extra turn that everybody's going to get. Uh, you do take an equal number of turns. Uh, but that's just minor minor details so i think the game has a lot of fun a lot of cool newer not newer mechanics but mechanics that by, might be newer for newer gamers that are coming in and want a little bit of a heavier game uh, so there is theme the artwork is nice the quality is great um, so I, all in all out of all my queens games i i do like this one um, I think it's fun, but I do th I, I can see where a strategic gamer might get kind of bored. Like, okay, here we go, same thing. Okay, it's over and it's over and over, and now it's more of a race. But if you play it more like a race, and you're smart enough to not to let your guys um, uh, retire, die off, whatever, uh, you're going to have fun with it. And um, that is my opinion. So if you like that idea and you want a good kind of medium weight game for um, everybody, Queen's Architect. Fun game, cool theme. Thanks. See ya.